Hello and welcome back to today's video where we're going to be dismantling the DS220 Plus. However, it's a few disclaimers I've got to throw out there straight off the bat. This video was originally recorded about three weeks ago. Unfortunately, when it was recorded, I had a whole mic set up. I had lots of lights with loads of, you know, lots of brightness here for us to utilize these devices and take a good look at them. And it was one of the first times I ever got to really unbox and dismantle one of the newer generation where we found out a lot about what their memory was like inside, whether they were using two slots, whether they were using one slot. And of course, as we found out the newer generation, in my since you know recorded videos, we've learned that a lot of the new generation technologies have soldered memory inside. So when that video was recorded, all of this was quite new. Unfortunately, I got a corrupt audio file. And consequently, the video that I'm going to show you today was recorded, but all the audio is broken, which is super annoying. And unfortunately, I do not have the unit here anymore for testing. It's currently on a remote location being used for some software overview, overview videos that are coming up very, very soon. I debated whether to utilize this old footage or to wait until I've got the unit back and dismantle it, but that's looking like that's not gonna be for at least another four to five weeks. So rather than you guys have to wait to see what the inside of the DS220 Plus is going to look like, I've decided to utilize that footage and provide a fresh voiceover. So what do we expect from this video? Well, first and foremost, it is going to be a case that when my face is in it, because it's mostly just going to be this area here, um, I am totally going to not be in sync with my voice there. I'm barely in the video, it's all about the unit, and this is fresh voiceover that I've applied on top of it. Second thing, when I did record it, I had lots of light here so we could take a good, good look at the device, and in some cases the brightness is just a little bit too high, so I've played with the contrast a bit, but if you do want to see what the inside of the Synology DS220 Plus looks like, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend for the most precise and most accurate um, images to go to the NAS Compare link in the description. We just got a full breakdown in today's video of exactly as we took it apart and lots of close-ups there of the internal hardware. But let's proceed with the video. Let's see what exactly the inside of the DS220 Plus looks like how to dismantle it because it is by far one of the most tricksy devices I've ever had to dismantle and ultimately give you guys some idea what you get for your money. Okay, so let's rewind to three weeks and voice over my video. See you in a bit. So we removed the front panel there from the DS220 Plus. And you've got to make sure that you've got the hard drives removed from this device. It really is important to do that, largely because you're going to be moving this device around all manner of ways. And if you've got your media still inside, notwithstanding that you want to get inside it, you could potentially damage that media. Now, the same goes for that memory slot on the inside there. If you've got a memory or module in there that's already upgraded on this device, make sure you've removed it. Because the problem is, if that's in there, you might touch it, there might be static, you might get dirt or grit or just scratch it. So make sure you've removed it. Now, what I'm failing to say properly there on the video is regarding this screw. There's this tiny one screw at the bottom right and the four screws that surround that fan. Now, you don't have to remove the fan. The fan isn't essential to be removed, but that bottom screw is hugely important. That screw is what holds in that USB 3 port. Those of you that have caught my four, um, so my uh, 920 and 720 um, disassembly videos that were done after this one will know that that USB port is one of the uh, things that holds this frame together quite a lot. It's quite a small thing, but make sure you've removed that USB 3 port. Now, again, you don't have to remove this fan. The reason we remove the fan is just for ease. Later on, when you do want to slide these panels apart, that fan panel doesn't have to have the whole thing removed. A couple of screws is absolutely fine. But the reason I removed it for this is just because it would make things a lot clearer to you guys at home, and particularly the viewing angle. <clears throat> As I'm sure I've touched on, the brightness of this video is largely down to the fact that this is a very dark box and often when we're looking at the controller board, we're looking at it at weird angles. So I know it looks like a nuke has sort of just gone off there in the background, but it is just because I've ramped up the brightness of the surrounding lights in this recording area, just to let you guys know. Now, 
we removed the little cover there and again that's not the whole fan that's just the cover for the fan that fits to the rear of the casing because what we're trying to do now is make sure we can remove the side panel from the casing now you see those two clips i'm pointing at there those two are the biggest pain on this device there's two clips that sit on that metal bar now they are the thing that's holding half of the chassis together now we've removed those screws the same design has been utilized in the 218 and the 216 before it. The idea is, is to leverage those two little plastic arms there over the metal bar without bending that metal bar. Now there's lots of things you can use. If you look to the right of the screen, you can see that I'm utilizing those two back plane metal clips. Although they're not designed for it, they are perfect for this task. You can also see that I'm using that silicon rubber mat. You need that for the friction against the base of the device. When you, rem when you levy those two little plastic clips at the top, which is very hard to see here, what it does is allow you to slide the two parts of the chassis apart. We need that silicon mat so we can gain friction to the base because it's the smaller base portion we need to move. But unfortunately, we're gonna be applying all the pressure to that top area which is what we're going to be doing here. And as you'll see, the top and the bottom move apart. It's not an easy move and you have to be delicate. Otherwise you are going to bend that metal bar. And if you bend that metal bar internally, not only are you damaging your NAS hardware, but on top of that, you are potentially stopping um, a hard drive going into that bay because the, dr the drive will slide over that metal bar. As you can see, we've almost got it removed. But now we have to make sure we've got the other clip removed as well. And what you'll find when you're removing one of those clips is the other one does not want to play the game. And I know it seems like I'm really laboring this bit. But if you are going to disassemble your NAS, which I don't recommend you do yourself because I'm doing this so you don't have to, that's going to be your biggest problem. And there you go. I've removed that top panel there. And that is probably the hardest point of this entire disassembly. That poor idiot there doing what he's doing didn't know at the time, but that was going to be the hardest point of this entire disassembly. Now, if we carry on looking, we can see here that the internal framework of those two bays is pretty straightforward. We've removed the main cover of that device, and the base there is where the main controller with our CPU, memory, network controller, and more is located. But we need to get into it by removing this top framework. We need to remove that two bay frame chassis at the top there, which is held together by eight screws, two on either side, both Phillips head screws. There's four screws that maintain and attach the drive assembly, uh, the two, the drive cage to that metal plate that surrounds the sodium memory module. And there's another four screws that hold that cover over the controller board itself on one side. But we need to make sure we can get through to both sides of that controller. Now, as I remove all of these screws, it's also worth highlighting while you're doing this that make sure you keep track of which screws are which. Because what you might notice while I'm removing these screws is they're actually different lengths. And as we put them to one side, four of those screws are meant to go all the way through the cage assembly with the other four screws just holding the cage to that main board. Now on the side there, you may notice I'm starting to remove a small white plug. Now that white plug there is what attaches the main fan to the board and powers the fan and transmits information so the fan can, in fan can increase and decrease. It's a simple uh, plug to remove. I'm sorry about the brightness of the light there, but it allows us to disconnect that fan from the assembly. Now, the fan itself is still held in place with that main clip at the top, but unlike the larger, more powerful NASs, that black clip at the top there is not screwed in. It's merely holding it in place. So now we have to go ahead and start removing the cage assembly. As we can see there, we're going to angle it there just slightly better there for you on screen. And as you can see, I'm pointing out that the framework there has to go. So this is where the other four screws come into play. And again, I'm sorry about the brightness there. But again, if you go to the NAS Compare article in the description, you will get a lot more information 
with regard to breaking this down in a far more efficient manner. I've done loads of photos there, so I do recommend that you check that out. Now, as I remove these four screws, things are going to move pretty quickly there, which I know for me relative is, you know, quick is quick. Um, you remove the four screws and you can already see the different lengths of screw there between the main cage and the screws that go all the way through to the controller board to keep this all in one piece. But from here, the main cage can now be removed from that casing chassis. If we look to the side, we can see that screw that's slightly above the power connector there because now we've removed and disconnected the main cage from the board, but the cage is still connected to the rear of the chassis. So now with this simple last screw being removed, it will ena enable us to remove the main cage from the rest of the chassis, and it will allow us to remove the controller board and the connected fan. So if we remove that plate there, we lift it out, as we see there, the main cage is now out, that's our hard drive tray, that's all out there, and the main PCIe connector there of the SATA drives going into the controller board. And there is the main PCIe connector that was connecting those SATA drives. That's how all the SATA transmission comes through. We still need to remove that back panel though. And to do this, we are going to now have to levy that board out of the remaining half of this cage chassis. So if we rotate it around for the best angle... We can get that removed out of there. And we can see that it's held in with the front USB. And we can move it around. And we're going to start to make sure that we're not connected by any cables that we're going to snap during the course of the rest of this video. So we've got that removed there. We've got the main fan assembly removed from the controller board. Still held in by the tape. We've still got the silver tape that's holding that fan in. Pop that there. Put that to one side, remove the remaining cage. And there is our CPU flash DOM there on the rear that holds the um, DSM. We've got the connectors there on the rear and that silver tape that's holding the fan in place that we're not going to remove. Remember, everything we're doing today may well invalidate your warranty, so do bear that in mind. Um, if we take a good closer look at that controller board there, we can see the main CPU, that heat sink there underneath that CPU. We can see that area of flash there that holds our DSM. We've got the usual CMOS battery that you'd find on any motherboard generally. And of course, we've got that fan still connected by that silver tape. At the base is where we're really the most interested to see the memory more so than anything. And if we rotate this around, we'll be able to see that metal plate there on the rear. Now, in the four corners of here, as you can see me directing out there, we've got four screws that hold the main controller board cover. So by removing these four screws, it will completely remove that metal cover on the rear of this device. Now, as we remove it, the main metal panel will come off pretty easily. Um, it's, you know, it's pretty downhill from here, and we're gonna take a good look at those memory modules. Now, at the time of recording, of course, this was the first time I'd had a close look at what the memory setup was on the newer generation Synology NAS. Since then, we've of course learned that they're utilizing a lot of soldered memory. But from here, if we rotate the device, we're going to be able to see that this has got that sodium port and those small Samsung memory modules soldered to the main controller board. So we'll turn it around for the camera. And as you can see there, We've got the sodium there at the base for that 4 gig upgrade. And on the right hand side there, we have got those four Samsung memory modules. Just turning it around for a better angle. There is the CPU again. We'll turn it around and we'll take a good look at those memory modules on the base of the device. Right, so there you have it. That was dismantling the DS220 Plus. I've completely removed the outro that I had on that, or I kind of waved it at the camera for you a little bit, and I hope you found this video helpful. I'm sorry about the mix-up with the old footage. I'm hoping when I get the 220 Plus back, we're going to do a dis uh, we're going to dismantle that and a few of the others and see how they compare. Uh, we are more interested about the memory modules inside this, and we've got lots of videos coming up where we've upgraded these devices with unofficial memory just to see what's going on. But if you enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.